the one you've been waiting for. Trades, free agency. I'm over it already. Oh, and Stevens lined him up too. Let there be no mistake about that. Stevens went at him at 100 miles an hour. He got another go. And he grabs him. He's grabbed Clay on the hold of the man. North Melbourne season is done. But it's really just heating up because this is a North Melbourne fans time to get excited. This is the time of year where we we have hypotheticals. We think it's all going to be okay just to get hurt next year. It's trades, free agency coming up and you know what time it is. We have to get Dylan back on because he's much smarter than me when it comes to this sort of stuff. But I've brought some stats. So uh, look, we'll see how we go. But Dylan, welcome back. Uh, We know what time of year it is when you're on the pod, mate. Yeah, it's always a time where you just, I don't know, like as a North supporter, you have all this hope and yeah, it's quite (laughs) a sad time looking back Mm -hmm. on what we've done in the past, but uh, hopefully this year is a bit different. Well, we can only hope. So basically we're just going to chat some stats and some numbers and some thoughts about a lot of the players that we've been linked to. So we've got about 10 players. Some will go into uh, into more detail that we think are more realistic and some others we'll just briefly touch on. Uh, but yeah, we'll try and get some numbers, justify why we might be looking at them and, and talk about where they'd maybe fit if they can come across. So I guess we'll start with the, with the most obvious one. Um, the veteran from the Eagles, Jack Darling. Now we've been linked incredibly heavily. Um, some journalists even going as far to say it's basically done already. Straight off the bat, how did you feel without looking at numbers and all that sort of stuff? How did you feel about Jack Darling coming to North Melbourne when you first heard it? Yeah, not not great. Um, I think when I first heard it, immediately I thought, you know, he's quite. You know, he's in that twilight of his career. Um, why would we get this guy into our club? Obviously, he's experienced. Obviously, he's won a grand final. But um, what does it actually do for us in the next, you know, three years? Mm-hmm. Um, he can clearly still mix it up, I guess, at AFL level. But whether he can, you know, he's, he's going to be 33 next year, I think, and... Yeah, I don't know whether he will fit in our in our lineup. Um, so yeah, my initial thought was was why are we being linked to him? What about yours? Yeah, it's interesting because look, it doesn't it doesn't excite me heaps, but I can sort of justify why I think we might be looking at it. I think my point of view on this is I'm not upset if we get Jack Darling, but I think I would be you know, confused if, and it, what seems to be happening is this is our guy, let's go and get him without looking at the, some of the other forwards, which we'll talk about that could be on the market or at least are gettable. Um, you know, 500 goal player, premiership player, so much experience and being, uh, you know, good in good sides. So I'm not upset about the fit. You are right though. 32 going on 33. I don't think, I don't think he's done, um, but I think obviously he's past his best. I think this is a this is a leadership. This is a standard setter. Um, this is someone who can come into the club. For our forward line, I think we can all agree is probably our most dysfunctional part of the ground as well, and it brings a lot of experience. So I do love it from that side of things. My worry would be getting Darling and him just completely falling off a cliff. Um, I was talking to Big Ant. At my at my work as a big Eagles fan, and he goes, he's not completely past it. Um, he played a very different role last year um, with uh, Waterman and Allen being the two keys, and him sort of not playing as a proper mm. key forward. And that's that's his words. I don't, I don't know any numbers or things behind that, but you know, I, I'm not. I wouldn't be upset if we got Darling. I think it's the right sort of signing, but I would be frustrated if. That's the guy. Get him day one of free agency and trades, and then we don't look at any other any other players. Do you sort of agree with that? I do agree with it. Um, yeah. So yeah, obviously initial thoughts wasn't great, and then you kind of, like you said, you kind of look at what they're going for. They're looking for experience. They're looking for someone to lead um, and teach um, our forward line how to how to function as a unit. Um, if you look at who we played in the forward line, so we had, you know, 
Toby Pink at times. And we had uh, Bryn Teekle at times. I would probably take Jack Darling over those two um, mm. as a starting key forward. Um, right now, I think he's a better key forward than both of them. Um, yeah, like Big Ant said, he did play a different role this year. Um, yeah, he, I was looking at his stats randomly. He, he's ranked elite for for tackles, which is something we really – yeah, really laugh. Well, this in, is something in, I was going to bring line. up as well. Was uh, like you know two point nine, so basically three mm. tackles a game, which is an really elite good. at AFL For a level. Key forward. Yeah, uh, one night was he one ninety one centimeters? Not not massively tall, but but a, a thick mm. boy and can clearly lay a tackle, which is something that we're we're missing. I think the the concerning one for me was like one goal a game, um, but realistically, yep. I think you know if he's playing more of a traditional key forward role, um, hopefully he could maybe. 1.5 a game or something like that. I think if he can kick, mm. I think at the moment, Jack Darling is obviously going to be just a stopgap. If he can kick 25 to 30 a year, along yep. with the rest of our Fords, kicking that as well. And Larky obviously having more, hopefully a Curtis and a Zerha stepping up maybe to get to the 40 mark. But if Darling can partner Larky, take a defender away, give leadership and experience and kick 25 to 30 for the next year or two, I think that's what we want out of him. Um, I think if we get him as well, we have to go to the draft and draft a young key forward. Yep. If we go and get some other people that are maybe uh, a little bit younger, um, which we'll chat about, then that leaves the draft a little bit more open. But if we get Darling and we don't get uh, a key forward in the draft, I'm a bit confused because we're in the same position within, you know, reportedly it's going to be a two year deal. Say within two years, we're going to be in the exact same position mm. again. So it's yep. an interesting one. Um, not like I said, not yeah. completely off it, but certain dominoes for me need to fall um, to to make that you know a proper thing with a young guy like an Armstrong in the draft coming in, learning under Darling for a couple of years, then can take over mm. and be like his partner. Um, I'd be very worried if we didn't get uh, a, a young key forward in the draft and you know got yeah. a thirty two year old key forward. So yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he, his deal. Is heavily back ended, so he's on a lot of money next year, yeah. and I, I believe that probably North are going to smooth that over over two years, mm. um, and West Coast would probably only kind of honour that that one year deal. Well, assume so. He's probably wants a little bit, little bit more job security as well. Yeah, there's a there's a quote here I saw this morning from someone called Mark Duffield. Now I don't exactly know where where he is from, but it ju- literally popped up just he's from before. WA. Yeah. Okay, so I said, it is understood the Eagles had planned to honour that deal, but are very open to the idea of Darling joining the Kangaroos for a late draft pick with them picking up part of his salary. So West Coast might pay part of his salary as well Mm. um, if the deal does go. And a late draft pick, I mean, I think it is worth it. So look, before we keep waffling on about Darling, I think, look, I'd take him as long as... As long as there's a there's a young key forward coming in the draft, and we have a succession yep. plan after that, I think people are a little bit too down on it without maybe thinking about what he can bring and what he can do. Um, but I also understand the other side of things where if he drops off a cliff all of a sudden next year, we're paying money for a guy and we haven't improved. So that's where sure. I stand. But yeah, um, not I'm not completely off it. No, I'm 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 with you. I've probably come around to that. To that opinion, um, mm. I, I was definitely kind of negative on it um, yeah. at the start, but 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 looking kind of behind it and looking who's available in the draft and um, looking at our age profile of our forward line, we definitely need that kind of experience campaigner. And um, yeah, for a year or two, I believe he can bring that and, and hopefully his best footy, obviously his best footy is behind him, but hopefully he's still got a little bit left. Um, and if he can give us, you know, 30 goals next year. That would be mm. a big, um, a big help. <clears throat> so <clears throat> someone a little bit more exciting, uh, I think to talk about would be Luke Parker. Now this is the one for me where this is the A plus, this is the go and get him at all costs sort of guy. Um, I was on, I did the round table with all the other uh, North Melbourne podcast lads 
And um, Jason, who seemed to be the most critical GM out of the lot of us, I was willing to give money to everybody, but um, he was sort of a little bit skeptical and saying he doesn't want to give him much money and all that sort of stuff. Where, where, how do you see Luke Parker as a fit for North? Because I see this is perfect A plus, you know, right age profile, still got two or three years of really good footy in him. How do you see Luke Parker as a, as a recruit for North? Love it. Um, again, premiership player. Again, really, really successful um, gun player. Um, he's a player that can go forward um, and play a lot of time forward and kick a lot of goals. Um, we've seen that in the past. He's proven that. Um, so he's a goal-kicking midfielder. He's a clearance machine. Um, and he's uh, he'll bring amazing leadership to, again, a, a part of the ground where we lack it, you know. Um, now, whether he – my only issue is kind of where he – bits in the team um our forward line is obviously a bit thin on on tools but in that medium size forward we are fairly stacked um, for talent and then in the midfield whether our midfield's good or not we still bat fairly deep yeah i think um we have a lot of depth there so i mean looking at potential delistings coming up you know like lazaro jury all those guys are going to go um, most likely, but um, it's kind of more about where he, he fits in the team and who gets yeah. pushed out um, because obviously he'd, he'd definitely play for us. <laughs> he'd definitely start for us and I think he can definitely help us with training standards and, and expectations and leadership on field and off field. But um, it's kind of like who's getting pushed out, I guess. Yeah, it's like, not does a bad question. Go forward? Like, like yeah. who, who's, who's getting pushed out of the midfield? Who's getting pushed out of the forward line? So... Um, yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see him. I, I, I can't wait to get him. Like, uh, I assume, you know, it feels like it's it's pretty kind of over the line. Um, I think it'd be a massive pickup for us. Uh, we haven't had a player of his caliber uh, for a very long time, so mm. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think I, I agree with <clears throat> with all of that. It's an interesting question about who would who would go out, like. I sort of see maybe next year him and Simkin playing a similar role. Simkin was quite good when he went forward. Obviously, he's mm. had notable goal-kicking games other than the last game, even though we were playing atrociously. And also, obviously, the West Coast game, um, kicking some crucial goals in that one. So I think they could sort of rotate in and out. Sheasel obviously plays that role as well. Um, but you're right. I think it's one he comes in and who does he make way for? Oh, sorry, who does who makes way for him? Like it, there's no chance that he comes in and, you know, even – and I love the guy, but like Eddie Ford, I, I'd be taking Parker over Eddie Ford, even though I think Eddie Ford's got great ability. Um, but we need that guy that sets the standard. So – you know, he's still playing at a pretty good, a pretty good level. Um, and he only played eight games for the, for the mm. season, but 291 all up, um, disp disposal wise is still 15 possessions and, uh, a game, um, and 3.3 marks a game. So he still gets around the ground, obviously plays predominantly forward for the Swans, um, yeah, I don't know. One and a half goals a game as well from eight games, which I think is pretty good. And yeah. a couple of tackles as well. So, but he also averaged three clearances in a game. I'd say he'd probably be playing a little bit more midfield for us if I was going to guess, because mm. I think, and I've made this comparison a lot, like in the Pies game when we were so far up and then we started to lose that momentum, he's a perfect player to throw in that midfield for experience, will crash and bash and win a clearance that's crucial to maybe, he's like a momentum, or, or maybe what we mean when we say barometer, not, not at an elite level anymore, but he's still an incredibly good or great footballer, still got plenty to offer. And I can see him being thrown into scenarios in the midfield or forward when we need something to change, like how we wanted a Zerha or someone to get thrown into the middle. So look, I hope, I hope this one is done there. Look, I'm not hundred percent sure the Swans are still playing. We're never going to know until after that, but you know, the, a lot of people, Cal Toomey has basically, you know, said he'd be very surprised if Darling and Parker didn't wind up at North next season and nothing is done until it's official on the club website. But Toomey is usually a fairly reliable source of information. And I think any fan who doesn't want 
Luke Parker at this club, even from the culture up in Sydney, just setting standards and raising the standards of training and, you know, crashing into a couple of these young kids to toughen them up a little bit, I think would be great. And we've seen in these eight games, he's still got plenty to bring. He's still playing well in the finals and that sort of stuff. So look, A++ plus mm. plus signing for me if we, if we get this one done. Agree. And, you know, eight games in a season, obviously still playing, playing finals, but you know, he had a, he had an incident earlier this season where he's, he got done for like striking in the VFL because mm. um, he'd, he'd been dropped, I think. Um, and um, he was out for like six games. Um, yeah. So he's going to be fairly fresh as well. And he's 31. I still think he's got like two or three good years left. Um, mm. So I, I love it. Yeah. I couldn't love this one more. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I just, just get it done at all costs and, and, and not at all costs, but you know, we just yeah. need to get it over the line. Yeah. Um, don't, don't, don't be picky about the finer details of this deal. You get this deal done <clears throat> any way you can without giving up something completely ridiculous. But honestly, like he's worth more to us than he would be his value on the market. Do you know what I mean? Mm, like with what mm. we need, even off the field, if we push the boat out a little bit and, and get him and people think it's a bit too much, it's not for us because the, the state, the club's in, what we're lacking so desperately, he's worth more to us than he is to other clubs. So yeah. I, I do say sort of get it done at all costs, to be honest, but um, yeah. don't give up pick two or anything like that. But, no. uh, you know, no. feel free um, to offer a chunk. Uh, yeah, yes. And he, I feel like he's a guy that when he'll, I assume he will, like when he walks into the club, people will kind of be a little bit, Demands a bit of respect. A bit, a bit intimidated yeah. by someone like that because of all he's achieved and all he, like he's still a really good player. So mm. I kind of like that. I feel like it'll ruffle a bit of feathers as well. Like how, yeah. 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 So we sort I, of need I think that. We need that. I think yeah. We need that. Uh, imagine a Sheasel sort of turning into that sort of player one day. I know Parker's mm. a bit thicker and a bit tougher, but Sheasel's only mm. 19 years old. You get Sheasel in the gym mm. for another two, three years, put on a bit of size. And I'm not saying they're going to be yeah. the exact same archetype, but, you know, learning off him leadership wise and playing wise for the next few years. I mean, that excites me. So get it Agreed. done North Brady Rawlings, fire Agreed. up the trade machine and get it done, mate. Yep. Okay. Agree. So this one, I don't think there is a world of chance this happens, but we're going to talk about Dan Houston because apparently we've offered our first round pick next, uh, next year's first round pick uh, to, to the power, which is very interesting. Now, do you think just that deal of what we've offered is a good deal? Like, is that something you would have done? Like, say that did bring Houston here, which I'm going to say again for all the people in the YouTube comments. I don't think this is ever going to happen. There's no way Houston wastes his prime getting north off the bottom of the ladder. But in a hypothetical world here, do you think our future first round pick would be worth getting down Houston? Um. I don't think it would probably get it done anyway. Um, mm. Port would, I think Port will want more than, than just a future first. We'll go, I mean, our future first will be, will a high be future first, though, fairly yeah. high. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't know how compromised next year's draft is, is going to be, but um, I still think there'd probably be a tiny bit extra that we'd need to give up for someone like Dan Houston. Um, yeah. It, it, it's, I mean, we haven't even met with him yeah. apparently. So um, I doubt that he'd want to come to a club at the bottom of the, of the ladder. He Absolutely. is looking at like a Carlton, um, a, a team that's ready to bounce into that premiership contention. He yeah. would be an amazing fit, let's be honest, off oh, yeah. the half-back line using the ball. Um, I think he, he'd be perfect. Um However, uh, that is kind of like a fantasy type. Absolutely. Yeah, thing. absolutely. You know, yeah, it's like what uh, if Harley Reid requested yeah. a trade? It's kind Maybe of we could get Petrarca, similar. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't look at it too seriously. Fit wise, I love it. Um, yeah, but but realistically, yeah, I haven't really given it much much thought about how to get it done. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think. You know, we are going to have, even the next couple of years, have pretty decent draft hands. And I think starting to use some of those, I don't think we need to take the, you know, the highest possible ta rated talent every single year. I think we've got basically enough talent and we lack people in their prime and who are leaders, like the 30 plus year olds. So I think, you know, once again, as long as we're being 
you know, uh, smart and strategic with these trades and things like that. I'd be starting to offer some more picks for some players that have been proven and that sort of stuff. And that's why, you know, Parker Darling and some other people will talk about make sense mm. for maybe what we can offer. But yeah, look, there's not much point spending heaps of time on this one. Cause I don't think it'll happen, but you know, no. 23 touches a game, um, elite in tackles, meters gains. I mean, it's just, yeah. And he's tough as well. And that's the difference. We've got like McCurchis yep. and Zach Fisher's off half back, which, you know, I'm a Zach Fisher believer. I, I think he'll, he'll grow and, and be better for us next season. McCurcher, I would be playing off half back still next year. But a Dan Houston coming in who does offer a more physical side as well as everything those guys can offer could shuffle things up. But, you mm. know, it's there's just no way it happens. So, look, nice fantasy world we're living in. But, uh, yeah, I'm, yep. not, uh, I'm not holding my breath for that one. Agree. Agree. Um, all right, Jack McRae. Jack McRae. Now, interesting ask for a trade from the Western Bulldogs. Everyone seems to be asking for a trade. Well, that's a lie. It's only two people. But, hey, here we are. Um, a very, a very interesting one. I think, I think he'd be great. I, I haven't heard incredibly strong links. I think the Saints, like every year, the Saints seem to be into every mm. single midfielder available. But, um, you know, he can play on a wing as well. I would love them to get this one done. I don't, I don't see us getting like Darling Parker and a McRae, even though that haul would be fantastic. But I think it, it probably pushes too many players out of the team. I, I'm just trying mm. to think about what our coaching staff would be thinking. I would definitely do it, but yeah, still a good player, 30 years old, um, 192 centimeter guy who's played just under 250 games. I don't know. He's still, his stats are still fantastic. Um, you know, mm. nearly 19 disposals a game, great with his hands, gets around the ball to Mark and it isn't really a goal threat, but you know, that sort of is what it is. Still got plenty to give at the top level. Um, do you think this one is in any realm of possibility and, and do you like the fit? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Mm. I, I just don't think we'd be after a player like him. Um, not kind of known for his for his leadership, I guess. Like, yeah, like Luke Parker. I'd much rather a Luke Parker at Absolutely. this stage of our club development. He's a really good player. Uh, clearly ha has you know some issues with with Bulldogs in that you know he started a sub like five or six times, I think, and um they made a really weird decision of of bringing in James Harms and starting him, um coming off not much preparation in that final, in the elimination final instead of Jackson McRae. And I believe he was pretty upset by that, um, which caused him to, to ask for a trade. I, I don't love the fit either. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm not, not a huge fan of the fit. He, he, he's, he's more of like, he can, he can use the ball on the outside quite well. Left footer, um, very good clearance, very good hands. Not that quick. I, I feel yeah. like we we have enough mid mids that aren't that quick. He, he, like his point of difference would probably be his his you know his use from the outside. Um, yeah. Yes, we definitely probably need that, but I, I don't know. I, I just I, don't I think love this take, one anyway. Yeah. He takes some minutes away from Colby and that sort of stuff, and maybe yep. his development as well. So I could see yep. him, if we did get him a Cray, I, I probably would see him playing on the outside a little bit more, like on a wing. Mm. I know Dylan Stevens wasn't amazing, so maybe he could go into that no. sort of role. But I still yeah. think, yeah. Yeah. I still think maybe you persist. Like I, I'm on record being a Dylan Stevens guy. I think he will be better and, and will be able to offer something. Yeah. Um, but you know, then Colby is also probably a natural fit if Fisher does pick up his form to go onto the wing. I don't see Colby maybe mm. being in the center bounces uh, all the time. I think he can get there one day, but he's still pretty slight. Um, so maybe Colby eventually takes that wing role. Look, I, I would, I would take him, but yeah, I think, I, I don't think it's a perfect fit. And I think it takes away from some areas. We've got at least options we need to give games to. So yeah. Especially yeah, with Will Phillips more. signing on in the midfield and mm -hmm. getting a Parker, I think will go in there. And the draft is so midfield heavy. Like we know what North's yes. like in the draft when they see a midfielder. So, yeah, look, yep. um, wouldn't say no to it, but would be interested to see, you know, maybe where the where the fit is there. But um, I think he's been much more strongly linked to some other clubs. So, um, yes, so not out of the realms of possibility, but don't see this one happening as much. Yeah. I think I think it'll be a I think it'll be a St Kilda or Collingwood that'll that'll snag him. Um, yeah, his brother plays for Collingwood. That seems like a natural fit. They That's need right, more yeah. midfield depth. So 
Yeah, I'd say that one. There's a pretty realistic chance to happen. Uh, yeah, it's in, the whole Dylan Stevens thing is, is an interesting one. Uh, still, yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, I'm not that high on him, but I, I still think we haven't seen even close to the best of him. Um, yeah. Jackson, Jackson McRae would be great on a wing, um, but we've already got like Bailey Scott on that wing. So, mm. you know, there's our wing depth is actually kind of decent at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Curtis Taylor has superstar potential as well. So, um, yeah. That's a money coming special. Yeah. That's a, that's a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting one as well. Though. He's yeah. going to be. I wonder when the dear listings are going to come out because I would yeah, have thought we were really excited to see that. Yeah. Some clubs who got knocked down the finals, like Carlton's already done their dear listings and we're sitting mm. here having, have not played for <laughs> two or three, three weeks or something like, what are we doing? Anyway, must be some, maybe, uh, maybe would... Curtis Taylor's kicking the door down and the meeting's still going on. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I think they, they probably just did it. They're going to do it after the best and fairest that was last mm. night. So, yeah, you'd expect some some delist things this week, I think, <laughs> or and some some people that are going to have to wait to see what yeah. what happens as well during the trade period. All right, um, let's talk about another one here, Matthew Owies. Now, this is one that I expect to stay at Carlton. Um, so, just to reiterate here, these are just all the rumours, not the people that we think are going to be coming to North Melbourne, but haven't offered him a contract yet. And I guess all the chat is Carlton need to mix something up. They can't have the list that they do um, and keep failing as much as they do. So, look, I'm assuming they haven't offered him money yet to see what they can move around before offering him something or maybe he's someone that even though he had a fantastic year and he would – I'm not saying he'd get massive money, but he'd get a significant pay rise from the Blues who seem like they're pretty capped anyway with money. So, look – this is the player we're screaming out for, like a like a small forward that finds the goals. He's definitely that, and I'm not saying he's like a Surioli type where he lights the place on fire, but he um, he doesn't find the ball heaps. He only averages uh, just under nine disposals a game, but he's going to kick a goal and a half a game and just be a threat when the ball is around the contest. Um, I think the thing for me is like 2.3 tackles a game, <clears throat> which is an important stat when North Melbourne is looking at a forward because we have no one who wants to tackle in that forward line except on a good day. So, look, I don't think this is, uh, you know, I don't think this is completely unrealistic, but I would be surprised if he came to North Melbourne. I guess 27 is prime playing for the Blues. I think the Blues do get him to stay, but... He's the sort of player that we need, and it is very interesting to see that we haven't uh, or he hasn't been offered another deal yet. Mm, yeah, very, very strange one, this one. Um, had a fantastic year. Like 33 goals is, is a great year for a, for a small forward, particularly in a forward line that, that, that is, so you know. So deep, yeah. So deep. Um, they have so many just just quality forwards up there. So to, to keep 33 goals is, is fantastic. Yeah. Um, can't see us, us getting him. The, the Blues will definitely make a deal uh, and, and yeah. figure it out to keep him, um, particularly coming off a, off a fantastic year. Um, he is absolutely someone that, that would fit right into our team. Um, he'd probably take like a, a Robert Hansen Jr.'s position as a, as a oh, yeah. small pressure forward and, and, and that can hit the scoreboard. Um, yeah, what a fantastic fit he'd be. Um, but, yeah, can't, can't see it happening. No, no, neither can I. So look, um, we'll go to another small forward because I think this one's maybe slightly more likely, I, you know, to, to conclude always, I guess, yeah, would, would absolutely love him and, uh, you know, they should definitely do it if they can, but don't see that as crazy realistic. And like you said, I think the blues to get it done. This other guy has been spoken about very briefly a few weeks ago, but we haven't heard any more links, but it's Malcolm Rosas from the Suns. Now, the, this was the one that got posted up um, and people were incredibly harsh and instantly re- rejected this guy. But I think when you look into some of the numbers, you know, I think this is a pretty good, uh, uh, very gettable as well. Apparently the sons have told him, look, we, we'd like to keep you, but look for your options. Um, he's only 23 years old, 180 centimeters. I know it's highlight reels always look good, but he's got pace and he's got goal sense. He can find the goals in a tight space. He only average similar to always, to be honest, he averages, you know, uh, seven and a half disposals a game, but he kicked one point. So it says 1.7 goals on average. So he's just, he's averaging just under two goals a game um, this season. He only played seven matches because the Suns have got a lot of young talent coming through. 
I think this is the perfect archetype of player to go and get. Look at what the Hawks did last year with, you know, no one rated Chole or D'Ambrosio wasn't the guy that we that he turned out to be. But Hawthorne went from last to basically one of the best teams in the league. I'm not saying we're going to do that, mm. but, you know, they found guys like this that, that have talent and have some experience at the level but are gettable and can fit the system. And I just think he... He fits everything that that we need. Look, t- tackling wise, maybe not quite good enough. But if a Parker is there, I'd hope maybe he can fix that up a little bit. I mean, for his career, I mean, he had a great twenty twenty two and a decent twenty twenty three. But this is the most, as far as I can see here, this is the most goals he's kicked in a season. He only got seven games. But what do you think about this one? Because averaging just under two goals on just under eight touches. 23 years old um, with a little bit of X factor about him and a little bit of that spark, go and get him. I I think this is the perfect guy to sort of replicate what a Hawks did where you find a guy that's on the outer, but has a little bit of something and make him better. I, I'd back Clarko and guys like Parker and, and whoever other leaders we've got um, or hopefully we'll get to develop him a little bit. I love it. But what do you think? Yeah, I don't mind it. Um, he's been, um, I got pushed out. Of, of the Gold Coast side this year after playing a lot of games in, in 2023. Um, mm. They picked up Ben Long. They have Ben Ainsworth, Bailey Humphrey. Um, like they have, they've got a lot of depth in that kind of small forward role. Um, so, yeah, he has been pushed out a little bit of that team. Um, 23 years old, great age bracket. Uh, yeah, I, I don't mind it. I think we definitely need more small forward depth, more pressure on spots. Um, Because right now we have uh, Blake Drury, we have Mm. Robert Hanson Jr. Jr. Yeah. Who I think showed quite a bit in the last kind of couple of games. Year extension for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he earned his spot in the team and he had to work really hard for that. Um, I know that, that, I know that Essendon is always linked to Malcolm Rosas. Like they had a real big crack at him like two or three years ago. So I'd expect them to come pretty hard mm. um, for him again. Um, but yeah, no, I like it. We definitely need more depth in that part of the ground. He's a left footer. He's really crafty. Um, and he's had some good games against us actually. Who hasn't? But um, yeah. Brent Eagle did too. But no, yeah. Yeah, like played 19 games last year and then kind of, I don't know, Dimmer might not kind of be a fan of, 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 of him. So got pushed out of the team, but yeah, no, nah, love it. Um, I think mm. we should definitely try to try to make something work here. Um, if, if, if he's, you know, if he's looking to, to, to get out of the Gold Coast. Yeah, for sure. Another player um, <clears throat> that we can sort of maybe put in the same bracket, similar type of player, Jack Martin got delisted by, by the blues. Now I've heard links that he's, he asked for that delisting and is going to go to Frio. I feel like everyone's going mm. to go to Frio this off season yeah. apparently, but um, look, it's a player we should definitely have a crack at. I know his uh, injury history is pretty bad. Um, so if we did have a go at him, I wouldn't want to give up too much and I definitely wouldn't want it to be the guy who's going to come in and be our small forward. He is 29 years old, but I don't know, just as something – to maybe fill a gap if we can't find, I would rather a Rosas, to be honest. I know Jack Martin's shown more at AFL level, but his injury history is, is pretty bad and he is 29 years old. I wouldn't say no to this one, but I don't know. I I don't think this player sort of fits the profile perfectly. Um, strong links to, to Fremantle as well. I think he's a WA boy, so that's obviously going to be why, but I don't know. He's played 151 games, which is pretty crazy. He's been around for 10 years, mm. which which yep. is wild. Um, yeah. Now I guess I didn't know he was like 20. I didn't know he was that old. So look, I'd maybe say no to this one, but um, is the sort of player that if we could get him cheap and take a crack, could we get a couple of good years out of him? Maybe, but I, I'd prefer a Rosas and obviously no, yes, yep. but, but like a Rosas is maybe more realistic. Yeah. It would be a free hit for us. Um, pick him up as a delisted free agent. Um, so you don't have to give up anything for him. Um, hearing, yep, similar to you, strong links to, to Fremantle. He is a WA boy, so probably wants to go home. Um, his injury history is, is, is terrible. Like he's, he's done that many halves. Um, whether we kind of need that or not, 
like whether we want to kind of deal with that. I'm not so sure. Um, but yeah, free hit. Uh, I'm very similar to you. I, I, I'd, I'd probably rather a Malcolm Rosas who we can help develop and, and, and he won't even hit his prime for another few years. Um, yeah. So I'd, I'd much rather someone like that. However, um, when Jack Martin is on, he uh, is a really fantastic, damaging, um, skillful player. Reminds me a lot of Terrence Thomas. Um, yeah. Quite good overhead. Um, his pace is decent. Very crafty around goal. Plays can play taller than um, than he is, um, but is also really good below his knees. So yeah, a free hit. Absolutely, I'd take him. Um, but yeah, wouldn't be. He'd be down the priority list, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. All right, so another trade rumour, well, not a trade rumour, I guess, more of a delisting is Matt Taberner. Now, Taberner is someone that I feel like I've been saying we need to get this guy for a few months now, to be honest, because and I can't believe he got delisted. I, I think he's a really good player. We've seen at his peak he can be a really good player. Um, injury and getting pushed out of the team has really sort of affected him. Obviously, Josh Tracy coming in and just absolutely ripping that spot from him completely. I would love to get Matt Taberner, but the one thing that I didn't know until I looked him up was he's 31 years old now, Mm. a little bit younger than Darling, and I think he would have maybe more to give with like a lack of games. I guess he's only played 125 games, but I guess I worry about the injury history. At least Darling will play every game and – um I don't know. I was really hot on this one, but when I found out he's 31 and only played 125 games since debuting in 2013, I'm slightly cooler on it than I was because of the age mainly. So what do you think about this one? And do you think this is any sort of chance? I haven't really heard any links for him. Um, It's only fresh that he's been delisted and I don't know how many people would have been expecting it. Obviously the pies and the D's are looking for key forwards, do you think this is any realm of possibility? And what do you think of the, of the player? Um, it, it's possible. I, I don't think it's a massive possibility. I, I'd personally rather Jack Darling, okay. if, I'm, if I'm totally honest. Can you um, justify that one for everybody as well? Because I feel like there'll be a lot of people out there who would rather him. And I definitely was one of those before looking at this, but mm. maybe just give us an explanation as to why. So some people can, can understand that process, my thought process. Um, the first one is, is durability. Um, mm. Matt Tabner is, does get injured quite a lot. Um, he's really only had like one, one <laughs> good season, Matt Tabner. And that was, mm. that was a while ago. Um, that was like three years ago. Um, he's played set, he was played seven games in two years. Um, yeah. so he hasn't played a lot of AFL footy, a lot of, a lot of, um, kind of like high level, uh, footy. So that's a worry for mine. Um, I feel like you don't really know what you're going to get with Matt Tabiner. Um, yeah. Whereas Jack Darling's a proven commodity um, and he brings he brings success with him, whether you like it or, or not. Um, yeah. This guy's been really successful, over 500 goals and a premiership and brings leadership and experience that that I feel like Matt Tabiner doesn't. So um, from my, my perspective, I, I'd probably rather just Jack Darling, but... On, on on the on the other side of it, you know, um, and he is, you know, Matt Tabin is you know, 31, so I'm with you. I didn't realise he was that old, but um, I'd look at like a – like if we're looking at this type of forward, then I'd look at a memory or I'd look at a Jake Ricard or someone mm. like that um, rather than Matt Tabin. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, there's a good segue because we are going to talk about those two as well now. We'll talk, we'll talk about Riccardi first. Now, this is not one that's been linked whatsoever, um, but I think it was Triple M was talking about, you know, us going after Darling and why don't we go? I think it was, was it Kane Corns who said this? I can't remember. Or he was on the panel while someone yeah, was. else was talking about this, yeah. yeah. Um, why don't we go after a Jake Riccardi? And apparently we've had opportunities to get him, but we haven't been haven't been interested, which is really, which is really strange. Um, from his profile here, I mean, he fits – everything we need 24 years old 194 i'm sorry 98 centimeters um and knows how to find the goals i mean averages five marks a game 
a goal and a half a game, but, you know, he's going to get an elevated role at North Melbourne. So you think he'd be able to improve that. Played 19 games this year and is currently sitting out of the final side for the for the Giants. So, you know, this one makes – obviously we need to give up a little bit more, but with, with the army of picks we're going to have this year, next year, whenever – this one, once again, no links whatsoever. So I'm assuming that this isn't going to be a realistic thing. When you're thinking about trade targets and you'd think North Melbourne as a recruiting, you know, sort of organization would have this guy on their radar if Triple M's talking about it. This is the perfect player that we need really, isn't it? Like, do you see any reason why we wouldn't be going after him and going after some of these other guys instead? No, I, I don't see a reason. It's very strange. Um We've, again, yeah, we've had opportunities to get him before. He's um, a really athletic player. Um, his finishing is okay. Um, overhead, pretty good. And he's someone that um, would have the the next, you know, five, six years to partner with Nick Larky. And there's no doubt that he would he would get games. Um, mm. The Giants last night preferred Lockie Keefe over... Over Jake Riccardi, bizarre. Yeah, didn't understand and that. I watched him watching him play, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm strange. not sure what the decision making process is. And I guess, yeah, for for a Riccardi, he probably sees that as well, and and would rather be a part of a Giants organization who is in finals, you know. Mm. And I, I feel like Riccardi could probably get his spot back fairly easily with a few yeah. games of good form. So that's maybe yeah. why I don't see it happening. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't chase him, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we should definitely have a crack. Um, I said this a couple of years ago as well, you know, that we should have had a crack at him. But, um, yeah, you've got Hogan, you've got Aaron Cadman, um, also tall forwards there. Um, you've even got, this is this is a left field one, but mm. someone like a Callum Brown who yeah. kind of plays that hybrid tall forward role for the Giants who has been pushed out of the team too. Like, I'd be looking, I think he's got amazing potential. Um mm. So they're two players from the Giants that I would definitely be be looking at. Um, he's such a good age. Um, he's strong. He's developed. He's ready to lift off. I think. And um, yeah, we'd be silly not to not to have a crack, whether we have or not, or whether we can is another another argument, though. So. Well, another guy then, let's talk about Membry because you brought him up before. 19 games this season, uh, 1.6 goals a game. I think from what I'm looking at here, um, it's one of his better seasons. He's had some slightly more in uh, 2016, which was a while ago. He had a great season. But, you know, 1.6 goals a game, 30 years old. He's only 188 centimetres he's listed as on, on the AFL website, which I find a little bit hard to believe because he seems a lot bigger than that. That's the one thing, mm. like, memory out of all of the forwards that maybe were linked, key forwards that were linked uh, with us, I feel like he's the one I would want the most. I guess that also yep. means the pies, all the all the Ds would be interested as well, and that makes it less likely for us. But he's, he's above average in so many stats, um, you know, gets around the ball, heaps of marks, you know, 1.7 goals a game uh, from from 19 games. I don't know. This is the sort of guy we should be going after. But 188 centimeters. I don't know. I don't. I I want a tall. I want someone who's going to be able to really crush that pack. And his numbers suggest he will, and he can because I've seen that before from him. I'm just a little bit wary on the height because if he does get matched up against a what 200 plus centimeter defender, does that? take him out of the game and why is he sort of on the trade block? You know, I think he's battled a bit of a, a slight injury. Um, I think, was it a knee injury? I can't, I can't remember exactly. Um, but I think that was, that was last, last season in 2023, but I don't know. Oh, we were linked with him, not as strong as any of the other guys like Riccardi as well, but I don't know. This seems like one we should definitely be going after, even though I think there'll be bigger clubs in for him as well. Yeah. Um, he, he he had a bit of an interrupted preseason, like he had a bit of a, a mental health, uh, you know, scare. Mm. So obviously, we wish him wish him all the best there. Um, of course, yeah, uh, one eighty eight centimeters. He's got so he makes up for that. Kind of, I guess lack of height for a better use of the term. But he um, he has a really good vertical leap. Um, so he's someone that, that has to use his athleticism to to compete. Um, really, really good overhead. Really uh, accurate kick at goal too. Um, yeah. That's one of his his strongest attributes. Um, so I really like him in that aspect. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't. We, I, I mean, hundred percent take him. Um, probably toss up. I'd probably rather him over Darling, honestly, because I yeah. think Tim Membry still has a few years um, left at, at a decent level. Um, yeah, I'd love. North to, to, to pick him up. Um, he'd be great to partner Larky in the forward line. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's no real strong links there, but um, yeah, again, we should definitely ask the question. Um, yeah, he's kicked 30 goals this year off, yep. off, uh, off 19 games. Again, really accurate. Um, had a really good tackling year as well, so he's going to provide a bit of pressure in that forward line. Um, yeah. So I think he'd be a great pickup. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, but once again, I think that does like all those positives for him maybe lend to a bigger club or like a club who's maybe a bit better than us currently being able to go and get him. Like if the Pies went to him and offered him something, I mean, he'd be mad not to take that opportunity. I mean, you know, they're going to, they'll be battling for finals next year and and have such a good side. Why wouldn't you want to go play with Dacosses and Pendlebury's and that sort of stuff? So yep. look, I'm assuming like <clears throat> they're probably preferring Darling for a leadership perspective. He's been there and done it. Um, but memory does have um, a few years uh, more to give than a Darling. So look, I, I would like it too. I would probably say I'd rather it than Darling, but <clears throat> not, not by that much. I think the, the 188 centimeter thing sort of throws me a little bit. Um, I know he makes like a Dersma makes up for that with his, with his leaping ability, but I don't know. I, I like size and afford and just a bit of intimidation or being able to match up maybe one-on-one -on -one a little bit more because as we know, you know, we're not going to be delivering that ball out in front of anybody. We're going to be putting it to the top of the square and we need someone who can jump over the top of the pack. And I know Darling isn't that either, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought he was a little bit taller than that, but other than that, yeah, he'd be, he'd be a good get. Um, the yeah. only other player, Do sorry. Yeah. Oh, just, I was just going to say on that, yeah. like I thought he was, I thought he was kind of a good representation of St Kilda's form at the end of the year. Max mm. King obviously injured. He was, you know, him and uh, Caminiti, Cooper Sharman, like they did such a good job in that back end of the year. Like Saints were one of the form teams of the comp, really. Yeah. Like they were fantastic in the back end of the year and Tim Membry was a big part of that. And um, it shows that he can be like the number one target uh, yeah. forward. Um, so, yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, no, for sure. Look, I, I, I would absolutely not say no, no to him at all. Um, I guess they just prefer Darling because of, of leadership and experience and it's it's more gettable than um, than memory. Maybe they know something we don't with mm. pies or, or D's swirling around. Mm. Um, we can obviously offer more, but does he want to give up the last few years? Well, I mean, 30 is not even over. 30 is like you're still in your prime, to be honest. I think people yeah. have this yeah. – perception that 30 means you're past it now and that's just not it's not the 90s anymore it's not the case so um no. you know you can play into your mid 30s at, at, at a decent level still yep. so look would and take him yep yeah, yeah only only 100 and 180 odd games so he's still got mm. still got plenty of time finally yeah um the only other player i've got on here is another delisted guy in seb ross um mm. i brought this one up uh, a few weeks ago on the podcast when Marnie was here and she nearly vomited uh, on top of me, which was, uh, which was horrific. But look, <clears throat> I know that he's, his best is past him. Um, and obviously a guy who's played what, 211 games getting delisted suggests that he is sort of done, but someone to come in and play what we thought that, uh, that Liam Shields would do. Liam Shields played way more games. And I think we all thought he would over his couple of years yeah. at North Melbourne. As a depth signing, as leadership, as if someone gets injured coming in and playing a handful of games in the season, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it as long as it's cheap. Look, I know he's past his best, and but like as it, some of the numbers from last year, you know, just under seventeen touches, you know, four tackles a game, two and a half clearances. He just seems like a player to me that can come in and fill a role if we have injuries in our best, you know, 22, 23 aren't on the park. Um, I'm not saying go out and throw money at him or anything like that, but if he's got, hasn't got any more options and we need someone who's a proven leader and a, a guy who has been there at a high level in the AFL, I, I don't mind this one as long as he's coming in sort of playing VFL and, 
you know, filling in like it, maybe like a Hugh Greenwood did. Um, that would be my thing. I would take him for that role. What are your thoughts on that? I'd take him for that role. Yeah, for yeah. sure. As long as he's aware that he'd play, you know, between 10 and whatever, like 15 games in the BFL. Yeah. Um, I'd be fine with it. Um, you know, two, 200 games, two, two time best and fairest winner at St Kilda. Um, yeah would add a lot of experience still has a bit of footy left in him. I think, um, he 31, clearly thinks so yeah. that he, yep. He, he, and he clearly thinks that he's not done yet. Um, I listened to an interview was and he seems, whether he got delisted. Yeah. Yeah. Super keen to, to keep going. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just need a, a fresh start. Um, I think he's still, yeah, I think he's still got a little bit to offer and, um, but it just wouldn't be like that starting, no, starting role, you know, um, he, he'd have to know that he'd be down the pecking order well and truly, um, and, and be willing to, to bide his time in the VFL until, you know, younger players get injured and, 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 um, he'd have to know that he's part of like a bigger picture, um, yeah. and part of developing, uh, you know, your ward laws and, and, and sheasels, um, mm. and McCurches. Um, so, and, and, he wouldn't be on much, much coin either. So it would probably be like a year, you know, year contract and, and with not much job security, but um, mm. that's kind of the nature of, of the beast. So um, absolutely would take him, but, but, but purely for, for midfield depth, not for, not for a starting midfield role or, or you know, more than five to 10 games a, a year. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, I think we can sort of both agree, like Darling and Parker are sort of the two that have been yep. been strongly linked. With everybody else that we've talked about, who out of all of those, one, maybe would you want if you had to pick one other than Darling and Parker? And two, who do you think is the most realistic or likely for us to get out of all those other guys? Um, I mean, we have been linked to... To Matt Owies, so probably I still don't think it gets done. Um, who would I like out of all them? Jake Riccardi for sure. Um, yeah. He'd be number one for, for me um, apart from from Luke Parker. Um, yeah. yeah, it would be Jake Riccardi and then someone like a Malcolm Rosas I think would would add a, add a lot um, to our, our small forward um, depth. If I lived in a, a, a completely unrealistic world, I, I'd love um, Dan Houston yeah. as well. Um, I think he'd be like fit wise, it would be perfect. Um, never going to happen, but no. fit wise, it would be it would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Would you would you rather if you could pick? Would you rather Houston or Riccardi to come? Because Riccardi is much more, not, obviously not as good of a player, but. Um, much better fit for what we need. Oh, this is just a crazy mm. hypothetical. This is this is just me waffling and being stupid. Yep. So, what would you take if you took could take Houston or Riccardi? Mm, it's a tough one. Yeah. Um, so we're screaming for that that other Ford, but and we've got options yeah. in Houston's position, but Houston's clearly the best and is an all Australian. Yeah, I'd probably take Houston just because mm. he's proven. Um, it's yeah. more of a safe bet, whereas Riccardi's more of a, a a slight gamble um, for for what we need. It would definitely be Riccardi though. Yeah. Well, yeah. Our, um, our, our recruiting history from Port Adelaide is fantastic. So we've got that to look forward yeah. to if it, uh, if it comes through. Um, yeah, definitely well, not. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we sign Dan Houston Horrible. in the next two weeks and that clip gets clipped up and played, I apologize. I do not think he will be Jared Pollock or Jasper Pittard. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very and interesting. We've, we've sent a few players over there too yeah. that, 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 that are actually good, you know? Like yeah, well, we, we didn't Daniel send Motlop some of them. There. Some of them forced their way out, but uh, I know that's all right. Hopefully they're kicked out next week in the prelim and don't play in a grand final. That would make me very, very happy. It's, 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 one of the, it's one of those clubs that like we get the shit players, but we give our good players to them. It's a yeah. very beneficial relationship for, for Port. Annoyingly. Fantastic, yeah. We're in an abusive relationship with Port Adelaide. We really are. Yeah. Which is not, it wasn't on my bingo card when they're coming into this no, season. But hey, here no. we are, lucky North Melbourne. Well, hopefully we get Malcolm Rosas and he and he kicks yeah. he kicks uh, five goals against the power next year and one after the siren. That'd yeah. be, that'd be all we, right. 
with GWS, you know, we have a great history with uh, with Paula Hearn and Ooh, these yes. sorts. Yes, fantastic. Aiden Bonner. Aiden Bonner, yeah. uh, my boy. <laughs> yeah, your man. Yeah. What's Aiden Bonner been up to, mate? Have you been keeping up to date with him? I don't know. He's... Um, Instagram's on private now, I think. So, uh, oh no, I'm feel, you, feel didn't, a bit you didn't get out. in before he, no, did, he switched. Yeah, it. I didn't get in before he switched, oh, which was which was a, was a mistake. Looking back, yeah, <laughs> we all make mistakes, though, man. We've got to move. Past yeah, we it. do. We who's do. the uh, who's your uh, Aiden Bonner for the for the team now? Um, who's a, um, a fringe player? Well, not even fringe player, a rubbish player who you love. Um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've got a soft spot for I've got a soft spot for Bryn Tickle. I don't know why. Oh, I love Bryn. No, Bryn Tickle's not. Yeah. Bryn Tickle's way better than. Did you, well, he just, well, he just seems like a you know like a good lad and like a bit of like people seem to get around him and yeah, I love Bryn like Tickle. He, he tries his best every every game, so probably I do have a soft spot for Bryn Tickle. Sure. Yeah, I. Uh, you know what? I say cancel the Riccardi deal because I don't want to kick Brent Tickle out of his spot in the fourth. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Maybe. Look, you wait till Brent Tickle wins a Coleman next year, and yeah. uh, and we'll It'll be, be we'll be looking face, back at the Riccardi sure. thing, saying thank God we didn't do that. Yeah, Brent, don't you know? Don't hold it against me. I like you too. <laughs> so he shaved his mullet as well, which uh, which has yeah, that's frightening. That's a bit taking his superpowers away. Basically, if he yeah. comes back next year and has a career worst, I mean. We know why. Grow that hair back, mate. What are you doing? That must have been Kangalotto, right? Like, yeah, Kangalotto. I forgot about Kangalotto. Yeah, yeah, true. That's gotten yeah, a few we'll, boys this year. We'll um, we'll have to get him on. I'll I'll start recruiting Brintego to come on the pod, and we'll we'll ask him if he lost Kangalotto. Yeah, for sure. Get him on. Unreal. All right, mate. Well, look, I'll let you go. That's all. That's all yep. of the hypotheticals and fantasy land dreaming that mm. we can do for one podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm already over the trade period and it hasn't even started yet. Like it's it's such a love hate relationship because I'm so excited because I feel like if we get some of these guys, we could be saved. But I'm also so used to getting hurt that I know I'm going to get you know hurt again. So I don't know mm. how to feel right now. How how's your, what does your gut tell you? Are you excited or are you more nervous or just want it done? I, I, I'm probably. A- I align with you a lot today, actually. I, I, <laughs> I, I kind of want it, kind of want it done a little bit. Um, yeah. I think if we get Parker and Darling done, and then maybe one other, I'd be more than happy. Like that would yeah. be a eight out of ten for me. If we got and th- with all the realm of uh, realism here, if we got Parker, Darling, Rosas, and drafted like a key forward. Out of the draft, I mean, we're not talking about draft now, so I'll be really quick. But if we got, if we could somehow get a Smiley and an Armstrong out of the draft, and we mm. got Parker, Darling, Rosas, mate, mm-hmm. I, I'm, st- I actually think that's a great off season. Um, yeah. So, fingers crossed, I guess. I, I'd really like everyone listening to this as well to like keep your mind open with these deals and look mm-hmm. into some like numbers, which I, I need to do more as well. But you know, there's so much negativity about all these guys on social media. People were even saying no to Matt Owies. And I know social media isn't the best, you know, representation of what the fans feel, but you know, they, po- you know, a lot of the pages that posted up Rosas, so much negativity. No, 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 no. It's like, we need to remember where we are as a club here a little bit. I went on a bit of a social media yeah. rant about it too. And I'm like, we're not yeah, good. that attractive like right it. now. So no, we're not. look, Keep your minds open. Don't say no to all these guys yes. straight away. We're not getting Petrarca and Dan Houston and all that, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, Darling is that we think about why these players are coming in. Rosas is, hasn't hit his straps fully, but shown enough to be a better player. A Darling can contribute for a year or two and be that guy to make way when and take us up one level for then like maybe drafting an Armstrong who comes in over the top and takes us to the next after that. So anyway, keep your minds open. Don't enter everything yep. with negativity. Um, do a little bit of research on the players and, and see how they would fit and then make a more informed decision. That being said, no one's going to listen to that. And the next post that gets posted of a rumor is going to be pure negativity. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. And, 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 we're not, we're not like the reality is we're not an attractive club and we haven't been for a very long time. And that's why we haven't gotten Dustin Martin, Jordan Dugowie, Josh Kelly, Kelly yeah. um, all those guys, all those A grade talent that, that we went after hard. Like there's a reason why we didn't get them. So, and we're not going to, we're still not going to get them, even though we're, no. we might have the most exciting list in the comp uh, close to, there's a reason why we're not getting them. So, 
Um, we need to be a bit more creative and, and um, settle for, for players that are going to help develop our list that we already have rather than trying to pry out a, a, a Petrarca or a whoever. Yeah, recruit to get to the next step, not to the finish yep. line, you know. It's it's yep. steps. It's still going to be – I've, I've been saying this for a while, three to five years until we make – the finals for me. I still don't think in the next three seasons we'll be in the finals, but it doesn't mean that we go to six wins next year, then to 10, then to 12. No. And then we're sort of talking about maybe, you know, next season we're into the finals and that sort of stuff. So yeah. it's a process. I think all those players we're linked to would make us better. Um, and as yep. long as it's a step, even if it's a couple of years, I think it's worth it. So that all being yep. said, uh, thank you for coming on again. Uh, we're sure mate. this is your Thanks time to shine, me. mate. This is your season right now. You'll yeah. be back, I'm sure, talking about That's whichever what people poor tell soul. Me, and yeah. I think I'm already over <laughs> trade yeah. period like you. But yeah. uh, um, I think something that you said there's key. Uh, these players, the three that you mentioned, make us better. Yeah, don't they? So that's all we can ask for, and um, hopefully we 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 can nab them. Absolutely. Well, look, we'll get you back on soon, mate. Next, when Petrarca's yep. linked to us, you'll be straight on the pot. All right. Done. <laughs> Easy, mate. I'll chat to you soon. Thanks, mate. Take care.